I'm Brian. This is Greg with Gilware Data Recovery. We are here to talk about everybody's favorite subject, RAID 6 Data Recovery. And I say that with a lot of sarcasm. Uh, if you're watching this video, it's quite possibly because you just learned that you have something, your organization has something called a RAID 6, and it's probably because it just took a huge crap or dump on you. <laughs> That's an untechnical term, but yeah, this is usually what happens. People start Googling around like, oh my God, what is this thing? How do I get it back? How do I repair it? And they stumble upon videos like this. So we're here to kind of talk about what the technology is, the common problems we see, success rates, pricing, the whole shooting match. So uh, real quick, Greg, you know, what is a RAID? And then what is RAID 6? In general, RAID is uh, any term or any um, scheme involving combining multiple disks to look like one large disk. So there are various ways you can do this. And RAID 6 um, basically allows you, is RAID, RAID 6 in general is any scheme where you're combining multiple disks to appear as one and you can lose up to and including two disks and still keep access to the volume. So uh, for this, for RAID 6, the minimum number of drives you need to have is four. Um, anything other than that would be a different RAID level, or anything uh, lower than that would be a different RAID level. And, um, and ra again, RAID 6 allows you to basically take four drives and create a volume with two drives worth of capacity, because you're basically sacrificing the storage space on two drives for redundancy, or false tolerance. Yeah, so the way that it accomplishes this is there's this thing called a RAID controller, which is usually a could be a hardware card, sometimes it's a piece of software. RAID 6, it's usually a piece of hardware. Um, so that's called a RAID controller. Its job is to take all these disks, and again, it can be four, it can be more than that. Mm -hmm. Kind of four the most I've more. seen is like 24. Mm -hmm. That's pushing it big time, but I've seen it. Again, your odds of losing, when you have 24 disks, your odds of losing two are, you know, go up pretty significantly. So <laughs> the, the basically the RAID controller is going to take all these disks and convert it into basically one big logical disk to then hand to the operating system. And with RAID 6, the way that you get two drives worth of redundancy is you're going to sacrifice two drives worth of total storage. So if we had a four drive RAID 6 and each drive was one terabyte, Greg, how much storage are we going to have? Uh, check my math. I think it's two terabytes. Though. That's correct. Ding, ding, ding. Greg's the big winner. Um, so we'd have, and again, if we had an eight drive uh, RAID 6 with one terabyte drives, we'd have six terabytes. We'd have, we, we sacrifice two drives worth of that for the parity and the Reed Solomon kind of pool data that we're going to need in order to emulate one or two drives that take huge dumps. I don't want to dive too deeply into how it all works, but we find that the more educated you can be as an IT professional or as a consumer in a particular situation, uh, the better you're going to be able to understand what the heck you're shopping for here and the better decision you're going to be able to make. If the people you're talking to on the phone don't know this stuff, or if you know it better than them, yeah, hang up and make another call, right? Um, but the way that basically works in this very simple scenario is, you know, down here, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two infinity. That's what the whole operating system is seeing in this logical volume. Block one is going to have position, is going to be in position one, disk one. Data block two is going to be on disk two, position one. Over here on drive uh, three, we're going to have some XOR data here. And over here, we're going to have some Reed Solomon data. And what you basically are going to see, and I don't, again, this video would take 20 minutes if we were going to continue to go into it, is that we might have like position three over here and position four over here, and then this guy might have the XOR, and then this guy might have the Reed Solomon. And the, there'd be a pattern to how it does it. But again, I don't really want to spend, this really isn't for computer scientists who want to know about the Data resources are out there for, in very technical terms. What are and, and even <laughs> some on the Gilwar website, uh -huh. if you're really super duper interested in it, there, there's stuff you can find, or you could probably just look at the Wikipedia for RAID 6, and it probably does a bang up job. But um, anyways, uh, usually what we find in these scenarios is that three disks have failed. It's the normal call that we get. Hey, Gilwar, this thing is dead, and probably the most common thing we see is that three disks failed. Why? Because this thing, if you have two disks fail, is still going to be functional. It'll be degraded, maybe a little bit slow, mm -hmm. but functional. And what we see is that usually it's in small businesses. 
and when they set this thing up, they did not set it up appropriately to notify somebody at the company when a disk fails. So this RAID controller is supposed to be set up with some flavor of notification. You could have a physical alarm beeping loudly. You know, sometimes the, the RAID is in a remote data center and nobody notices, right? Or sometimes the physical alarm is not. How many alarms do we notice when we go to our data center? There's a lot of alarms <laughs> beeping. They're not ours. <laughs> but when we go to the data center, you have to wear some headphones because you hear a lot of stuff beeping and nobody cares. Uh, but we also see uh, situations where uh, you can set it up with a technology like Nagios to do remote monitoring, uh, remote heartbeats. You can set it up to, a lot of times on these rate controllers, you can set it up with, uh, you know. You can have a hot spare sitting there. To, you you know, can have some hot mm -hmm. spares sitting there uh, to buy you a little bit of time while the technicians get notified via an email page. You know, there's all kinds, if you are one of those guys in the 80s with that pager, you know, you can get paged. It's re revolutionary pager. Um, but anyways, uh, we usually see three drives are failed. So, you know, can we help and, and what is this mess going to cost? I would say the average RAID 6 that we see probably comes in with about 8 drives. 6 to 8, I'd say probably. Yeah, 6 mm -hmm. to 8. Um, and sometimes 1 or 2 hot spares. And you want to quickly touch what a hot spare is? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Basically, it's a drive that's sitting uh, in the um, computer, in their server system, but isn't used for anything. It's sitting there waiting for a drive to fail to immediately take its place. So it's basically a drive just sitting there idle until another drive fails, and that drive immediately jumps in and takes its place. So that saves you the trip of having to jump in your car and drive, what, three hours to the data center to replace a drive right away. Again, you should probably replace that hot spare eventually, but it buys a little bit of time. And good IT guys, usually when they set up these systems, are usually going to have a cold spare or two sitting there. When I do drive three hours to the data center and I'm trying to replace a bunch of stuff, usually there's a cold spare or two sitting there waiting for me so I don't have one to three days of downtime while I try to buy equipment. Um, but thanks for that. But anyways, yeah, Greg, Greg's main point here is that sometimes the thing that we see is really an eight drive system. It's a six drive RAID 6 with two hot spares. And when it comes in, it has five dead drives because both the hot spares have engaged at some point and the two drives they replaced are dead. So still. this thing was really left on autopilot for a long yeah, time. Yeah, we see this a lot. And, and then, so only three out of the eight drives function. And we might have five independent drive repairs. And we might have a lot of work to figure out what the optimal set of five out of those eight is in order to give you the best cut of your data, right? And we, we have a lot of tricks up our sleeve for how we do it, but it can take one or two days of high-end computer scientists to really dial this stuff in figure out what the best five out of eight to use are, figure out what the physical array then looked like, figure out how the rate controller was carving that into logical units or LUNs, figure out how those LUNs were then carved up into file systems, figure out how those file systems, and sometimes those are on like freaking hypervisors, are uh, going to carve that up into virtual disks or normal disks. And if, if this sounds complicated, it's because it really is. Um, you know, and as far as the good news is, our success rate on RAID 6 recoveries is over 95%. The vast majority of the time, we are going to get you a whole lot of your data back. And, and maybe it's not 100% perfect because the drive that died yesterday has massive platter damage. So some of the data is like two or three weeks stale. But we can almost always recover a whole lot of data. I would say it's very rare that we just miss. Mm -hmm. Um, we can always figure it out logically. It's just sometimes the drives have been clicking in a data center for years and all, there's just no more data on the platters. Um, long story short, um, aside from most of the time we can help, uh, everybody wants to know how long is this going to take in price. Partially that's going to do with how big the drives are. We're going to have a certain amount of time invested in just machine time of copying data. It's going to be quicker if these are one terabyte disks versus 12 terabyte disks. Uh, as far as uh, overall timeline with our standard service for like an 8 drive RAID 6, it's probably going to take like a week and a half, maybe a week, if it's easier than normal. Is that mm -hmm. fair, Greg? I'd say so, yeah. Um, cost. So the big, there's a bunch of drivers for cost. You know, we pay rent and all these types of things that normal businesses do. 
We tend to pay our taxes on time. Thanks, Obama and Trump. Um, so we have all these normal day-to-day -day business costs at rail sales. But what do our consumers or you know business customers pay for something like a rate six? The biggest drivers are driver pair costs and then human time, like the, the big brain human time. That's really where the biggest parts of that equation come from. And if we have to repair three disks or five disks, again, you could probably just take about $1,000 per disk that we have to repair. So I'm not saying if it's a 24 disk system with three dead disks, I'm not saying it's gonna be $24,000 worth of disk repair costs. It's probably gonna be $3,000 worth of disk repair costs. Certainly, if the drives are, you know, 15K SAS drives, it could be more expensive than if they're consumer-grade SATA drives. But um, driver pair costs are a big part of this, and then the bigger part of it is human time. So our, our high-end computer scientists who untangle stuff like this, they're often members of our digital forensics staff, and they tend to bill out much like high-end lawyers. I, I would say there is a fair thing to say for... Uh, where their kind of bill rates come from. And uh, kind of a common price point, depending on the person, is probably about $300 an hour. So uh, if it takes two or three days of somebody like a Greg and three or five disks fail, this recovery could cost like $10,000, $12,000. Um, every case is different. If you want to know specifically what do we think your recovery is going to cost, give us a call. We're quite possibly going to ask you a bunch of questions that you don't know the answers to, and that's okay. Um, we work with imperfect information all the time. The way that it really works is you talk to our technical advisor team. They're most often going to get you a shipping label to ship the equipment into us, complimentary on our dime. Greg's staff will perform a free feasibility study. Calculate, is this case feasible? What do we think the odds of success are? How many engineering hours do we think that this particular case is going to take? And uh, at that point, we're going to present our clients with a bid. And if that bid works for your organization, you'll accept it. We'll have a whole bunch of work to do. Most often, we're going to be financially risk-free. Um, so if you really want to know what is this going to cost, best thing to do, give us a ring, check with our technical advisory team. Greg, did you have anything else to say on the subject of uh, RAID 6 data recovery? I think you covered it pretty well. I, I sign his paychecks. <laughs> he has to say that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Feel free to give us a call. One of our client advisors would be happy to talk about your specific situation and figure out how we can best help you.